Today we're putting in a uh, tub shower faucet. I prefer using mowing, uh, single handle. Um, there's a lot of ways on the internet to put these together. Um, when you're doing with like everything's new right here, you got a big opening in the wall, you can lay it down on the floor and create everything that way. I do like doing it like that, it's kind of nice for certain applications. But if it's a uh, repair application where you just got a little hole in the wall or, or even a bigger hole um, and you want to install it with it being inside um, the wall and not prefabbing it, uh, this is one way you can do it. So that's what our video is going to be uh, for today is putting the faucet in, not prefabbing it, um, tub shower valve, mowing single handle, and a uh, replacement application. Um, you know, for years I never used the guide plate that they come with. Um, but there's certain applications where they're real nice to use. Um, anymore, I've kind of been starting to use them. Um, I normally will kind of guide where I want my faucet based obviously on what they're putting up here. They're just going to put up glue up walls, um, uh, so it's not going to be very thick. So, you know, we could be as far back as that. Uh, probably more like that. We can be as far back as that. Um, but I, I always try to bring it as far forward as possible. So ideally something like that would be good. Um, to where this is about in the middle of a half inch drywall. And that's only because I want this out as far as possible. Uh, for if we ever have to rebuild it, we can get to that real nice and easy. Um, it's, it's some of it's preference. Um, obviously you have to have it out far enough to get your um, handle and stuff on and be able to do your trim kit. Uh, the purpose of this particular piece is for gapping. Um, so they've got one side that's for a thick wall uh, and one side for a uh, thin wall. This one is set up for a thin wall. Um, and I believe, I've never actually read the instructions, I believe this goes flush with the um, drywall. So I guess uh, yeah, I guess we can read the instructions and we know. <laughs> but at any rate, um, I'm not going to fast forward any of this. The only thing that I've done prior to our uh, starting the camcorder was cleaning my fittings. Um, if they're brand new fittings with nothing on them, you don't have to clean them as long as you're doing real good with spreading your flux. Um, is it a good practice to do? Heck yeah, clean them anyway. Uh, but from me doing new construction, there would be times I'd use the normal flux, there'd be times I'd use the tinning flux. Um, especially in an application where you got the tinning flux, you don't have to clean these. But that's that's going into how to solder and whatnot, and that's not what our video is about today. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to speak less about that and more about putting the faucet in. Um, as far as measuring where you want it at, I'll uh, I think 42 inches is, is about good. You know, I don't remember. No, 42 I think is our shower. The way I always figure them up is I sit down in a bathtub and I reach up to a comfortable height for grabbing the faucet. Um, and, and that will kind of give me an idea of where I want to put my uh, valve at. Um, so I'm sitting in the bathtub, reaching up. This is where I'm coming up with. Then what I do is I stand up and just extend my arm down without arching over and then put my hand, you know, there. Um, without having to bend down or nothing. So right here is where I picked to put the faucet. I'm an average height guy, I would imagine, uh, about six foot. So I'm not super tall, I'm not real short. Um, and if I've got a tape measure in the box, I'll give you that measurement. I don't think I do. Just think about bringing that in to kind of give you guys an idea of it. So, but at any rate, um, I start with my water lines to keep my valve in place. Then I'll do my spout and hook my shower head. There have been times where I will only do my shower head and then work my water lines in. The reason I'm not doing my shower head on this one 
um, is because of where it's at. They've got this board dead center of everything, and that's where I want my faucet. And of course, they had to run the shower head off to the side. So um, that's the only reason I'm not doing the shower head first. Um, I think I'm about to cut some of that out. Can you hear me that uh, slug on that? I think I put it in the other room. So, like I said, I went through and I already cleaned everything up. So everything's already been pre-cleaned. Um, unless I use a fitting I didn't expect to use. Um, let's see, I've got a, uh, some people refer to the flux as acid, um, yeah, and this is kind of standard flux, I don't like using the uh, H, I think it's H2O flux, it's supposed to be water soluble or whatever, I don't like using it, it doesn't seem to work as well, um, I just use the Oakley number 5, they've got all kind of different brands out there. Um, or you could use tinning flux. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm like, I thought I had this where I wanted it. I'm about to cut it back a little bit. It's maybe something you're already doing, but uh, tail locks work nice for getting it out. So that's plenty deep enough for our faucet. Um, actually, it might be just about a little deeper than I wanted. Um, another thing you could do is the faucet body has these two um, spots on it for the trim plate to go on. And then it also has these spots in the back past those. You can use those to screw your valve where you need it to. You know, screw it in and then start creating everything. And that's not a bad idea. It actually makes it real easy. Um, but so at any rate, let me get it where I want it at. I'll set that water line, a piece of gallon or uh, copper in there, just replacement, so I can kind of get a, a point where I needed to be at. Uh, we're going to go with something like that. It's pretty darn close to what I'm looking for. And then I'm uh, going to go ahead and cut that off. Again, I'm not fast forwarding any of this. I'm kind of doing it in real time. You could uh, hacksaw this. You could sawzall it. Um, obviously, two cutter is going to be the best way because you're going to get a better cut. Um, if you do use a sawzall or hacksaw, I suggest, uh, or even a grinder for that matter. Um, I just suggest trying to deburr it and get all the burrs off, you know, sandpaper and all that. So, that'll give us a height there to kind of work off of. Um, where I ran that uh, tube cutter around it, it's kind of, it cleaned up a little bit more, but I'm going to hit it one more time right there just so there ain't no problems. Last thing I want is some problems with my solder joints when I get done. Um, for as cheap as flux is, uh, I highly suggest don't go sparingly. Uh, you would much rather, um, let's turn it down a little bit more man. Much rather have too much flux on there than not enough. Um, and you know, it's gonna make for a better solder joint. 
Sorry, I started thinking that music, my music was too high. Um, you can get away with not fluxing the inside of your fittings and putting them on, uh, but I suggest go ahead and putting some flux on the inside as well. Um, when I started doing new construction where we had to pressure test them, a lot of the joints would hold without putting flux inside there. However, there were ones that failed. And once I started realizing that, then I started putting flux on the inside too. Uh, again, the flux is the key to getting a good joint. Uh, that and your temperature and whether there's, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there uh, that's going to determine how well your solder joint is. You know, is there any water in the pipe? What kind of torch head are you using? There's many applications where I go out to people's houses. You know, the guy knows a little bit about plumbing. He tried to do the stuff himself. Um, he gets to a point where he can't. You know, he's stuck. He can't go no further. And I'm having to come and finish the job for him. And uh, there's many cases where it's because there's water in the pipe. There's also many cases where it's the torch head. Um, I don't really have nothing to talk about right now, so that's what I'm kind of telling you. I'm sitting here cutting these pipes. I mean, if you're measuring it outside, you want to look inside the depth of your faucet to make sure that when you do get your cut, it's going to be where it stops. In some cases, it's easier just to go on and put it in there. Again, I'm going to try to keep this uh, about installing the faucet um, and not soldering, but while I'm just sitting here cutting pipes, I might as well uh, talk, touch on it a little bit. Um, I use a turbo torch head on my uh, for my torch, and I always use map gas. You know, propane's all good; it works, especially in an application like this where there there's no water in the pipe because there's lower places in the system for it to drain to. Um, and however, it just for the most part of times, you know, it's not this sweet. You know, and that's why there is water there, and you have to heat it up, at least evaporate that first before your pipe gets hot enough, get solder on there. So I just use map gas all the time um, rather than propane. And I like propane, it's a, it's a little bit cheaper, but it's, I don't know, I hate it. But if that's all you've got, it will work. It's just going to take a little longer for your joints to heat up. Um, if there's water in the line, it's going to take a little longer to get that water to evaporate and, and come out. So again, uh, it's a little hard not to touch on soldering when that's what we're sitting here doing. Make sure you uh, have a bunch of the flux on there. If you're not used to soldering, it's probably a good idea to remove your cartridge so that you don't melt it. On a new valve, Pull your pin, grab hold of that cartridge, and just pull it out. Set it off to the side. The next thing that you want to make sure is most valves will have a top or up or whatever. Well, this one has, says up on it. This little knob right here is there for the purpose of the sleeve to go around. And I don't know where I lost it at. Somewhere in here. Yeah. That's where it fell out. Oh, here. It's hiding under stuff. That little knob right there is for this part of the cartridge. That part, I mean, uh, this part of the discussion. That part is what stops your handle from rotating all the way around. So um, you can put it in upside down. However, the chances. What's probably going to happen is you'll get a little bit of water coming out of your shower head and out of your tub spout at the same time. The way this valve works is if you look inside there, it's a little hard to see. There's a hole there for the cold water, a hole there for the hot, and then there's a hole in the bottom for the tub spout and nothing on the top. The reason there's nothing on the top is because the water is forced to go down your tub spout. You pull the diverter on the end of your spout and then it shoots up inside this little cavity here on the back of the faucet to feed the shower head. And you can see inside there, there's holes. 
So it will work upside down, it's just not going to work as you expect it to. So make sure your faucet's in upright. Um, if you're used to soldering and you're using map gas, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and pull the cartridge anyway. And I, from time to time I'll still pop up with a leak because I'm trying to be careful with the heat on the valve body. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and uh, pull it on out. That's right, I forgot I was going to put street 90s on to bring my faucet out just a little bit. So being that I put that apart and then put it together and it took it apart again, um, I'm going to re-hit it with the flux again. Don't go sparingly on, sparingly on it. It may save you a headache. Just go and slap it on there be sloppy as you want. Because I'd rather it look all sloppy and you have a good joint than it not look good at all. Or, I mean, you know, look all pretty and then it end up being a leak, a leaking fitting. So that side's about uh, where we want it to be at. Sometimes people have problems with uh, their their valves falling out of their joints, whatnot, when it heats up. And again, this is touching touching on soldering. Um, crimp them. Crimp the uh, fittings just a little bit. Just enough so they don't move a whole lot on you. Um, of course, I crimped it in a manner it's uh, turning a lot easier there. So, no worries. I normally always do the other side uh, next anyway. And then try to solder as much as I can all at once. So we're going to be about right there. It doesn't hurt to go ahead and use a level, a little torpedo level, maybe some uh, little small uh, torpedo level or something um, to help uh, make sure everything's perfectly straight. Again, it's, you're going to be a lot happier when you get done uh, and you know it's perfectly level than, than not. So, you know, that's an idea. If you're on a slab, the lowest point you have in the house to drain your water at is going to be your toilet valves and your water spigots, outside water faucets. So if you're continuing getting water, you've got your main shut off and you're getting water out of the line, um, try opening your outside water faucet or outside spigot. Uh, and if you have to, disconnect your supply lines on your toilets to get that uh, draining down. The idea is so that water can't reach up to this point in your system and cause you problems while you're soldering. Like I was talking about earlier, normally whenever I have to go out and help somebody that knows enough about plumbing to get the job done, but they, uh, you know, they're like, look, I've you know, normally I do this all the time, I do it by myself, but you know, I wouldn't even have somebody here helping me, da, da, da. You know, they're feeling crappy because they had to, they started a, a task and then they end up having to call somebody. They had somebody come help them out, which I completely get. Um, but it's, it's those situations where every other time they soldered, there wasn't nothing, uh, no water in pipes, no, nothing giving them any problems. There's a uh, Surefire torch head that I don't care for. I swear I probably wouldn't use one if somebody give it to me. It does have a nice big broad flame on it, but it's not real fine tuned. And um, normally that, that fine tuned pinpointing heat is what you want, you know, where it's specifically going at one particular spot. Uh, the blue part that comes out of the end of the torch head is uh, in the center of the flame is normally referred to, from my understanding, as the feather. When I'm soldering, I'll normally take the feather and get it right up on the, the joint. Now they say that uh, the heat will, the solder will run toward the heat. So ideally you should, uh, you know, if you're soldering this, this one, put your uh, flame back here, 
and then put your solder up here and allow it to run around. Um, it also, providing you got enough flux and stuff on there, it should run into the fitting or suck into the fitting. You can almost see it happening while you're uh, setting there uh, soldering it. Uh, you're not going to see it every time, but uh, you will see it happen. Now on these uh, valves, if you're questioning where your pipe goes to, do that. Take a mark, pull it out. Looks like it's about, uh, you know, probably almost a half inch. Um, make sure that this didn't slip out on that side. Kind of hold it up where you want it, and then get your measurement. If you're using rubber gloves because of the tips being all bubbly, I've had that throw me off sometimes in the middle of doing a cut. So, uh, yeah, just be careful. Measure, you know, you know the old corny saying, measure twice, cut once. Typically on the tub spout, you uh, want it about three inches up from your um, the base of your tub or not the base of your tub but like the ledge of your tub um, where you know you set the soap and all that good stuff so about three inches up from there you're going to uh, kind of guesstimate and use that for measuring purposes um, where you bring your uh, tub spout line and all that up and out Now this one I'm having to recreate the tub spouts. Some of them you don't. It's just a matter of reconnecting to the existing one. The other thing you want to make sure is that your faucet's not cocked like sideways just ever so slightly. And this one kind of is trying to do that to me. So um I may end up putting a screw in it. Is there one inside this box? That's ridiculous. See the long screw in there and all that? No, of course not. A couple of decent long shorties, which may be enough for me. Now that's trying to cock the other direction on me. Um, so we're probably going to have to go ahead and hook the shower head up before we do any of our uh, soldering. Ooh, I didn't clean up. You just don't care. You don't care. Just tear a man's house up. I normally will keep my shower head on and then place up there while I'm installing my faucet. That way I can watch it and see where it's at. Um, make sure it's coming straight out. Another problem that will end up happening is some cases the shower head riser isn't fastened down. So when you're removing your old faucet, you're kind of going to want to make sure that that is fastened down and if it ain't, do so. Um, which in return, if you leave your shower head arm and head and all that on while you're doing your faucet, you don't really have to worry about it falling. It should pretty much stay in place. You know, give or take about a half inch because normally that hole up there where it penetrates the drywall is uh, not a perfect hole. So we'll go ahead and get my flux on there. Again, go heavy. Pay off in the long run. I think I'm going to use double 45s on this. 
Darn it, I need a regular. 45s generally will allow water to flow a little bit better. Uh, you know, you can you use the 90s, of course. Um, I have uh, many times throughout my years of doing plumbing, so it's not going to hurt anything. Oh, geez, this one I've got is pretty grimy. That's okay. We got the. the brush on a screw gun. So I like the way 45s allow the water to flow. Um, if any of them is going to give you a noise for restrictions, it'll be the 90s where the 45s uh, could still put a noise off, but it's not gonna be as dominant. But if all you have is 90s, you know, don't worry about it. Put them in. You know, don't too, put too much headache, put too much thought in it, you know. The, the goal is to get this done. Uh, heck, maybe you get it done by yourself and not have to call anybody. Um, and relax. And if you know how it is too, you better make mama happy. Mama would be mad if you uh, waste all day long putting this faucet in and then turn around and have to call somebody anyway. <laughs> you know what, if I'm going to have to use a coupling there, I might as well use that street at 45. Same difference as the other one. So yeah, let me do that. I only need a little bit, so I'm gonna use the street side of that 45 with a coupling to give me that little half inch I need. And here I thought I had all my fittings uh, good and clean and ready. shorties um, roughly uh, it's if you need a little short one that's just gonna go between your fittings like if you were putting in a joint like that and you need that little short section there use a, um, a coupling to get your measurement be pretty good. You could even take the coupling and add like a little eighth of an inch to it or uh, I mean a sixteenth of an inch. Um, sometimes I prefer to see a little bit of meat in between the two fittings. Um, makes it a little easier for soldering purposes. Now it is going to go down inside the faucet a little further than what the hub of a normal or the socket of a uh, normal fitting would be so you can cut that side a little long if you want. Again, normally I'll do my hot and cold water line and then solder my valve in place, but because it's kind of moving back and forth, um, I'm going to do my shower head first. Or I mean, before I start soldering stuff. Like normally it'd be hot and cold, solder the stuff together, and then start working on my uh, shower head riser and my tub spout. But this is going to put the give me my uh make everything square and level so that i don't have to sit there and hold it all that good stuff um being that we pulled our cartridge there are certain things that we don't have to worry about now like uh the gases inside the pipe for soldering i mean <laughs> again this is kind of touching on the soldering aspect of the job you know, I wasn't going to dwell on that, but 
confining myself so much time, I might as well speak on something that's useful. So again, you know, I'm, I'm heavy on the flux. It's going to be what allows your solder to stick real well. I'm going to put my 45 on first because I've got movement out of my shower head riser. And I can put it on fairly easy. Okay, it's a little tighter than I wanted, uh, but that's okay. Just gonna use my uh, channel locks to turn it and get everything to go in place. Here we go, perfect. Show them. Uh, normally though, like if we don't have, since we've got our cartridge out, it's not too big of a deal. But um, there are many applications where if your cartridge is in there or you're having problems or you could potentially have problems while you're soldering with the steam, um, you know, you start sweating, you evaporate the moisture that's in there, you build up steam or um, evaporate the flux builds up steam which in return translates into pressure uh, which will blow your solder joints out if you see your joint bubbling with the solder on it then it's a leaker no doubt about it it's more than likely it will leak it's rare that it'll bubble and not be a leaker so that's something to look out for um, another thought is start high and then work your way down to the bottom because obviously steam hot air all that stuff's going to raise up it's going to come up first now again we've got our cartridge out so our steam and pressure should just come on out of the valve body so i'm going to try to zoom in a little bit further while i'm doing this soldering so maybe you can kind of see what's uh, going on here your bottoms um, but it doesn't hurt um, and obviously I'm doing all these joints from the top to the bottom normally that solder is going to go in there and start filling your bottom joint up before you even get to it so it's not going to need as much as you think bad 
joint, it's because I was trying not to put too much heat on my valve body because I chose to leave my cartridge in. So there are uh, you know, a bunch of benefits to pulling that cartridge out. Try to readjust here for you. See if I can't zoom in a little bit. See if you can see the solder suck on in to this uh, fitting. Normally you don't want to put your torch head below there like that and you're going to drop solder and flux in the head too. But this uh, blue spot here I was talking about is the feather I was referring to. That's all pretty much done. Now we just got to create our um, tub spout line, and uh, then that's it. Should be a 
holding up, what else? Rough. piece of uh, copper that I cut out of here in the house in a different location. Uh, one of the reasons being is they had a water softener so that there's not really a whole lot of buildup on the inside. Um, another reason is because it's uh, L copper which means it's a little bit thicker than um, what I tend to buy, I, I buy M, which is the thinnest copper. Um, if I'm buying any copper, I, I prefer to put everything in PEX. I'm definitely a fan of the PEX. I just about decided to PEX the hot and cold on this uh, valve here. But I was like, yeah, better not. It's just a short little section. I'll have more in the two brass pins and I will just about doing the whole thing. So again we're gonna man darn it. I want the tub spout right there. I'm not going to put the tub spout where I normally would just because of that piece of wood in there. I'm starting to burn up. I don't know. Let me turn the heat down. That's right there behind you. Matter of fact, let me turn it back down to 55 where they had it. things with your tub spout and you need to decide uh, what spout you have. Do you have the kind that expects to have a um, male threads down on the inside of it? Hit that with your light, Matt. Down on the inside there there's male threads or does it have a white thing that comes all the way up to here with the allen screw right here? If it has the white piece with the allen screw that's a slip fit tub spout. You just slide it over top of the copper um, and then tighten the allen screw down on the bottom. If it has that uh, male adapter spot on the inside, then you're going to have to uh, create a um, little short section of pipe with a male adapter on it for that tub spot to go on. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt on this one because the drywall isn't here. I would say stub out Stub the um, line out, put your drywall up, and you know, after, of course, you make sure you don't have leaks or anything inside there. Then uh, go ahead and stub it out extra long. Um, stub the pipe out real long, you know, so that you got plenty. Put your drywall up, and then start working on putting your male adapter in. I don't care for that, that style at all. Just because it takes a little, uh, a little more time to, to do. A couple different ways you can do it. 
can take and uh, create a piece of copper with the male adapter on the end of it, solder it on, you know, screw it in there, about, you know, pretty good and snug, and then measure what your distance is between here and your 90 that's inside the wall. You know, so you put it up against your wall and then you measure back to here and then that'll give you your, your length uh, from your spout on. That's a little bit, um, it's not as precise and it's bound to give you a problem. The other way I like doing it is I use this part of the tub spout as my guide. I normally go back to about here on the spout. I set my male adapter on there holding it about that far back, about a quarter inch back. And then I set my spout up against here, get a measurement of where I need to cut it at, cut it off, um, sweat it on, and then go from there. Sometimes you can put more uh, Teflon on there, so that like if you're having trouble making a revelation for your spout to be facing downward, um, sometimes you can put a more little te little more Teflon on there and be safe. I normally will take the threads, and you can see where the threads start, like right there, where they're starting, and I'll put that up top. So I'll slip it on with that spot up top, and normally I find that that will give me enough of tightening down my uh, spout and it being in the position I want it to be in. So, but we're not going to do that today, so I hope just telling you that helps. Pretty much it to putting the faucet in. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. On the cartridge that we removed, it has a hot and cold marking on it. So, you gotta look at that. On the top, there's an H and a C, which says where your hot and cold's at. If for some reason your house the water lines are flipped, you can take this cartridge and put it upside down and it'll flip the hot water for you. So ours is right, so we're gonna go hot on the left, cold on the right, like it's supposed to be. Where did the darn pin go? Oh. Then you're gonna take your pin and put it in. This is the only thing that keeps that cartridge from blowing out. So you're going to want to make sure that it goes down in there properly and then goes all the way. Like right there, it's, you know, the discussion won't slide on, but it would slide on right there and it's not necessarily all the way in. So give it a little tap, make sure it's all the way in there. Actually, it's a little too far. Right there is where I want to be. I feel good about that. Now, we don't know whether or not this is on or off. 
So if you can, have somebody else turn the water on, on for you and be stand, you know, setting off to the side here, getting ready to move this to a point to where it shuts off, okay? Um, I can't turn the water on here because I've got other lines open in the house. Um, so, like I said, some places I use this, some I don't. Um, we could put this on here so when the drywall guy comes in, uh, he'll know where to cut the hole and, and won't make it too small for me to get back here to my stuff, which isn't a big deal. I'll just cut it out of the way and, and then, you know, get to the holes that I need. But we'll go ahead and put it on there so he has a concept of where to cut it. Heck, he may not even do that right. It's hard to tell him. I guess it really just depends on if he's done before. So, uh, in the meantime, I'm going to take this scushion and put it in the box with all the other stuff. So that uh, that's not a problem. And again, that's uh, really about it we'll end up putting our male adapter on here if we need one the new the new spout should have the slip fit uh, on it so I again I shouldn't need it um, that's about it I hope this uh, video tutorial helps you um, again I always try to go with mullen they seem to be the better faucet their parts are expensive when it does come time to get them however they warrant them for life all you got to do is call 1-800-B-U-Y-M-O-E-N and they'll send you a new cartridge for free. Those cartridges and these posi temp valves are about $50. You can get an off brand for about $38. Uh, I don't normally suggest doing that, but um, it, it will work. Delta parts are even cheaper uh, and they're, you know, they're pretty universal. So delta, delta faucets are decent. Um, I would just so much rather have the mowing. So if you can, get your mowing and uh, use it, install it. Uh, overall, in the long run, you're going to have a, a better product. Say you get, you know, five to eight years down the road and you no longer like what you're looking at here. Well, you can order a new trim kit uh oh sorry you're not looking you don't like what you're seeing on the outside where your hand on all that's at you know five eight ten twenty five years down the road you can order a new color whether it be brand new chrome to make the faucet new looking again um you know they got all kind of colors uh polished brass gold uh, antique to uh, nickel you know get whatever you want but you can replace everything on the outside and it looks like a brand new faucet you know so where it's a little harder to do with the uh, deltas. Not that it ain't possible, but um, you know, it, it's a little harder to do. I don't suggest getting anything but a mowing if you have to, a delta. But don't get anything else other than that. It's just some big problems and you're not gonna be happy with what you got. Again, hope the video helped. If it did, uh, like it, share it, subscribe. I try to do at least a video, at least one a month. Um, and that's when I'm slow and, and not thinking about doing them. When I'm on top of things and I'm running into new stuff that I don't have videos for, uh, you can find me posting five, six, seven, eight a month. So, um, you know, keep posted. Uh, there will be other plumbing videos. If you have questions about the install, um, leave it in the comments or, or send me a message. Uh, I'll be more than happy to help you, um, guide you, maybe answer the question. Sometimes it does take me a few days to, uh, to get back because I don't get a chance to get on there every day. But you can guarantee if you put it on there Monday, by Friday I'll be back with you. So, if it's something urgent, you may not be able to get me. Um, but if it's just general questions or knowledge or, or whatever, I could uh, be more happy to get on there and answer your questions. Again, thanks for watching.